Hey everyone, it's Alex here. We're gonna get started in just a bit. We'll give people a little bit of time to uh, join in, but thank you all for uh, registering for this webinar. I'm very excited to share information on this uh, wonderful new grant that we have from USTA. So uh, just hang tight. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. My name is Alex Chan. I am, um, I am the Associate Director of uh, Community Services for uh, USTM Atlantic, and I'm also the point of contact for this Word of Game grant within our section. Um, today I'm gonna to present on some information regarding the grant, as well as some other details such as the um, like important dates, deadlines, uh, some information on some uh, bonus incentives that our section is providing, as well as tips for applying for this grant to make sure that you get it. All right. So if you have any questions um, as we go through this webinar, feel free to put them in in the uh, Q and A box. You can also mention if you need to, you know, if anything happens or you know if I disappear for whatever, for whatever reason, uh, just hang tight. Sometimes my computer will freeze. Hopefully it won't this time, but if it does, I'll come back in a few minutes. Uh, and also, if you hear any crying babies, just ignore that as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, feel free to also use the chat to um, ask any, um, you know, if anything that comes up, feel free to put it in there as well. But for any like major questions, go ahead and put it in the Q&A, and I will do my best to either answer it by the end of the presentation or during the uh, presentation. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and move one second. Ooh, there you go. Sorry. All right, here we go. So, you should see here a page that shows some important links and, and uh, resources. Uh, I included the links right here. Um, so the first one is for the main USC Nationals uh, website that includes the actual application as well as the, the, the FAQs for the application. So if, um, if you haven't checked it out yet, you really should go ahead and, and save that uh, link and go there. The other uh, link that you should probably check out is our USTA Mid-Atlantic uh, Grants landing page. So over here, it also will give you a summary of what the grant entails, but will also include some additional information around our um, incentive program, which I will get into more details later on. And then lastly, again, I am the point of contact for the Grow to Game grant for Fin and Mid-Atlantic. So if anything comes up, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I have my email address here. I think most of you all should have that, but just in case, it's here as well. All right. What is the Grow to Game grant? All right. This is a grant that USDA National has put out um, to support like such the, the, the big increase in tennis participation this past year. So if you haven't seen it, um, there's a PAC study that shows that we've had a 22% a increase in tennis participation this past year. And that's about 6.7 million new and lapsed players that have came back to the game in uh, 2020. So we want to capitalize on those numbers and also help out all the groups that are out there that are running programs for these for these players. Um, I think I think everyone I talk to, they, they all of them are already doing this type of program where they're they're offering some type of entry level programming for new or returning players. So since they're already doing it you might as well get paid a little more for that too, right? So that's where this grant comes in, where we can help. Um, if you apply for this grant and you get it, you can use the funding to help uh, defray some of the costs in your program. So that, that includes your, your coaching costs, any equipment, uh, marketing materials, and so forth. Um, and I'll go into details as far as like how much that is uh, in the next slide. Uh, the other thing I also want to note that this is a competitive grant, so it's a first come first serve type of deal. So uh, I'll that'll play a part more uh, in the next couple of slides. You'll see what I mean. Um, all right, so funds available. We have one hundred thirty-two thousand dollars to give out in the Mid Atlantic. Uh, that's a lot. So we want to make sure that we are giving out all that money um, to worthy groups. And I'm sure like everyone that's on this. Uh, webinar is a worthy group because you're on here, right? So um, go ahead and uh, definitely apply. Uh, what this a grant is for is, uh, I think the way it works, sorry, the way it works is that we give out grant funding based off of the number of eligible new and returning players that you service. 
so here's a kind of breakdown of what it looks like. If you are, for example, let's say you're running a program that serves eight to 20 um, eligible players, that's $10 per player. And then as you, if you do more, then you get a little bit more per player. So 21 through 50 players is um, $11 per player. And then 51 or more players is $12 per player. So as, as you can see, it can, it can definitely add up. Uh, the thing to note is that these funds are not released to the, um, the applicant until the end of the program uh, because you have to submit the validation forms. Um, and again, I'll go into more details on what that looks like later on. Um, so just make a note of that, that, that even though when you apply, you will get, you may get approved, but you won't get the funding right, right there, right there and then. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, this is a, a competitive grant. The, and we have this funding, but as soon as it runs out, we're, we're out. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I have a list of all the uh, applicants that have applied. I can always kind of give people a heads up when we get close to that time where we're starting to run out of funds. As of right now, you should be okay because uh, this grant opened up a couple of weeks ago. This grant, um, I mean, when most programs will not be submitting their validation forms until uh, like towards the end of October, maybe November timeframe. So we have some time, but just keep that in mind. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to give everyone a heads up if we get too close and I, I start feeling like there's a risk of people not getting funding, but I'll try to keep you all in mind for that, just in case. Um, yeah, all right. Here are some important dates and deadlines to keep in mind. And I don't know why I just did that. <laughs> there you go. All right, so grant application is open now. So you can start applying as of right now. Now, keep in mind that the time frame for eligible programs that you can apply this grant towards is between May 1st and November 1st. So that means like any program that starts May 1st or after and finishes by November 1st are eligible. So I know that we have some groups out there that runs like year long programs or they might have like consecutive programs. It's, uh, it's okay as long as it's between those, this time frame. So you can have multiple, uh, you, can have, you can have multiple programs listed under the same um, grant application as long as those programs are taking place during this time frame and not after. The deadline to apply for this grant is October 1st. But again, I would highly recommend you apply as early as possible, if not right now, just so we can get you in. And I can also keep you in mind uh, earlier on if, in case we start getting close to uh, funds running out. All right, and then for the paperwork, the basically the, the validation paperwork, uh, the deadline to submit that is December 1st, 2021. But again, I would recommend you um, uh, complete that validation form earlier than that, just so you can make sure you get that funding. Uh, and then applicants will be notified of awards or, uh, you know, or uh, de de declination. I mean, that's how I pronounce it. <laughs> um, 50, within 15 business days uh, following the validation documentation uh, submission. So uh, yeah, well, so I think just in general, uh, what, what's going on on my end is that every week I am uh, reviewing uh, new applications and then down the road, I will also be reviewing weekly these, um, these validation forms with, uh, with a team. So we'll be checking this pretty regularly. If for some reason you do not hear back within like 10 to 15 business days, feel free to reach out to me. And I'll see what's going on. All right. All right. Yep. There you go. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about eligibility requirements for this grant. All right. Any organization that is in good standing with local, state, and federal guidelines. Uh, no individual. So I say this because this grant is meant for, like I said, it's for organizations. Uh, it could be a wide variety of, of organizations. That could be parks and recs, for example. It could be CTAs. It, it could be private clubs. Um, we don't want individual coaches to be applying for this grant necessarily, unless they have their own um, you know, LLC or business entity. Um, that'll come to play later on when we do the, uh, the validation uh, report. Uh, next one is open to the public. And this is what it says um, on online. It's open to the public. What that means is like anyone in the public can uh, participate in this program. But that said, it's not a really, it's not it's a, it's a soft rule where we do have some um, uh, leeway. 
Uh, so for example, if you run a, a private club, uh, where it's members only, but you are offering a beginner or entry level program that that's uh, um, bringing in new or returning players, that's more, I'd say that's more important on our end. Like we want to see that uh, as many groups out there as possible are reaching out to uh, these, these players that are out there. So um, although that's technically the rule, I, that's something that on, on my end, we will deliberate as far as whether we want to approve that or not. Um, so don't, don't let the fact that, that if you're just a private club or you only have members only uh, deter you from applying for this grant, you should still definitely apply for this. Oh, actually, we'll get, uh, about the next line. It's a program, this program services new and or returning players. So new is, it's fairly obvious what that means, but for returning players, what that means is uh, anyone that has not participated in a coach led program in the past uh, 12 months. Um, so that's kind of the definition of what the returning player means, uh, in case you're wondering. I think, again, for a lot of programs out there, like I don't think, like actually last year, we didn't really have too many stuff going on. So that should be, shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, all right, next part, again, reiterate that programs must begin uh, May 1st or later and end by November 1st. And I, I think I just saw a question that came in regarding that. The program needs to end by November 1st. So let me, I'm gonna answer this live. So yes, the programs, it should end by November 1st. Um, we do have some leeway from what I heard from National is that we, if it's like, if it ends maybe, uh, let's say November 8th, like a week after, it might be okay. But the problem with this is that we can't keep on pushing it out too far just because of the, uh, the funding. I mean, that's one reason right there, uh, uh, because uh, you cannot submit the validation uh, forms until after the program is done. Uh, that will start, it will hurt your window of getting that fund if you wait too long. So, and then we can't keep on pushing that deadline much further. So I'll say November 1st, aim for that. Um, if it's a week or so after, we can consider it. But again, I would not recommend applying that grant toward a program that ends that late, just because you start running into that risk of um, not getting access to the grant uh, funding that we have. Okay, um, programs uh, must provide group entry level tennis that involves a minimum of four sessions per participants. All right, so I, I've kind of put this also class, I said classes here, because I think session is, it has different meaning, meanings depending on the group. I, when I think of sessions, I think of, that's like a group of, of classes. So it really what it means is that as long as you're running a, um, like a program that where the participants meet at least four times, then this can apply. So, and it also has to be a group lesson. So it can't be like a private lesson. I think they want to steer away, steer, steer away from that. It's more about group, uh, group programming. Um, that can include summer camps, for example, um, that would meet this uh, minimum requirement because uh, the summer camps, typically it's usually uh, what, four to five days in one week. So that's four different uh, classes or sessions. So I, I would say that counts in my opinion. So, um, but yeah, as long as it's a, a group class that's, and that's an entry level based, that's more important for this uh, requirement. And I mentioned earlier that this grant it can include multiple programs and sites. So this is a um, just an example. Like um, let's say you're on part, your parks and recs. Uh, let's say you offer a, a beginner classes um, throughout the summer, but at different locations. You would not put in an application per location. It'd just be one application that includes everything. I do know that on I do know that on the application itself, I think you do have to put in a um, like a main location. So put in the location that, that you run most of your programming at, but then later on, you can um, add additional details as far as where they are and where they're located. Um, so one application per organization that's applying um, for this grant. All right, and the last part is the participant surveys. So this is what we're asking for um, every um, applicant that applies that, at, that what will happen is that we would, um, when I say we, I mean like a national office will send a copy of, a start a link to a online survey that we will ask you all to share with your participants after the program is over. And what that survey really entails from, uh, it's not, I think it's just still finalizing the exact details. So I don't have it just yet, but from what they explained to me, it's, uh, it's gonna be mostly focused on the customer service aspects of the program. like. You know, probably basic question would be like, you know, did you enjoy it? You know, maybe like, you know, what did you like about it? 
uh, it'd be those type of questions. And then there should be an, an opt-in option at the end where if they want to get more um, like newsletters from USTA marketing, then they can opt in for that. Um, but um, the main part is that you're uh, agreeing to send out that, that survey to participants. Um, not make, you know, I'm not saying that you have to make them all you know, fill out a survey, obviously that's very hard, but you should at least send it out to them um, so that they can have a chance to fill it out. All right. Uh, let me see. Next. All right, here we go. All right, so paperwork. Uh, this is what happens after your application has been accepted by us. Uh, then what will happen is next you'll get an email from uh, the USTA National Contact. Her name is Lynn. Uh, you'll get an email that shows um, a link to this validation form. And what it includes, you will put in the program name, the uh, program registration URL, program start and end date, number of participants and their full names. Um, so just make a note that this is uh, you put in their name, but you don't have to put in like their um, like emails or phone numbers. It's really just their full names. Uh, and then you also put in the, the coach's full name and email address. So that's the, the coach that are, um, that are running those programs. And then the facility name and address. So again, like, um, the, yeah, whatever facility that program is running, you put that uh, information in. The second part is the, uh, they need a W-9 form. So that's, that's, that's where we know um, where we can send the money towards. So again, there has to be a business, uh, a business uh, W-9 form. It shouldn't be an individual. So just keep that in mind. If you're, um, I, I, do not, I do know that there are some coaches out there that are kind of on their own, but they do have a business that's uh, registered through the state and all that. That's fine. Uh, we just try to kind of uh, shy away from just the, the, you know, the random one-off of coaches. Um, all right. So hopefully, by the way, I'm like, I'm actually moving pretty, at a pretty good speed. So um, again, if anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in the, the Q&A. Um, next part, it's about our bonus incentive program that we as USTA is providing. So in our section, we're doing something extra that anyone that applies for this grant and they are accepted, they can opt in for this bonus incentive program. And right here, I just listed initial, I'm, I'm gonna show you the rewards that you get, and then I'll show you what are the, uh, the steps that you have to take in order to get these rewards. Uh, but yeah, first off from Hard True, uh, we are giving out a $250 gift card while supplies last, 20% uh, discount on eligible online orders from them. So when I say eligible online orders, that's uh, mostly like their equipment. It's not for, um, I think, Mainly, they're, they're kind of referring to like any court resurfacing. That's not uh, part of that discount, but everything else for most part is. And then they also will offer a complimentary facility consultation service. So what that means is they can, uh, they, they can do this actually in person or uh, over um, like a like Zoom or you know, a video call. They can take a look at your facility and provide some best practices and uh, best advice for that uh, to improve your facility. So they're offering that. So thank you, Harchu. Um, and, and for those that don't know Harchu and the next one, Diadem Sports, I'll go into a little bit more information on their background in the next slide. Uh, Diadem Sports, what they're gonna do is they're gonna provide access to their, um, their wholesale pricing of their ball cases. And that's actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good deal because in case uh, you all have not heard, there's a, a shortage of balls uh, right now. Um, so they, they did say that right now they are they have a shortage if um, they probably won't be able to ship out any balls until at least a couple months from now. But just keep that in mind. But once they can, uh, you can have access to their wholesale pricing of their balls. They can do free shipping for orders of six cases or more, which is a good deal because uh, no their normal um, policy is 12 cases or more. So they would have talked them down uh, to six cases. And in addition to that, the USTA mail Atlantic section will offer two free cases to um, to the to applicant as well. So what that means is that if you just wanted the two case, we can pay for two cases, but then you have to pay for the, the shipping cost. But if you order at least four cases on your, on your end, then we can provide, we can pay for two more cases. And then that will be a total of six cases and does you get free shipping on that. So that's just some options right there. Um, all right, then we all we'll also offer some uh, USTA uh, mid Atlantic banners that um, if you want, you can hang them up on your on your uh, on your courts. Um, there will be a um, 
a QR code on there that would take them to a, a landing page on our website that talks about um, like, like uh, entry level, like entry levels and returning players, like what they can do, like uh, who, who they can uh, go to. So that's some, some good information just for um, the uh, outside consumer. And then finally, we will have some, uh, we'll provide some additional access to uh, discount opportunities with other partners that we have. Uh, TBD. So yeah, I don't know exactly those full details, but we will have some additional discount opportunities with some other partners. All right. So I want to recognize two of our major partners for this incentive uh, program that we have. We have Diadem and Hartshoe. Diadem, uh, they make several products. Uh, they, you know, I think you might have seen them on social media. They make, uh, um, I think initially, I know I first heard them through their strings. So they, they do make some strings. Uh, they make rackets now. So they have some Diadem rackets and they also provide balls. What's great about them is that they are the last American brand. So they are based in, in South Florida. Uh, so they, yeah, you know, other brands are they're outside, um, but they're one of the last American brands here. Um, and then they're, they're very friendly. So if you ever need to reach out to them, um, you know, they have a, an awesome customer service. Uh, uh, they're, they, yeah, they really want to help out, uh, help people out. So that's Diadem Sports. Uh, Hartshoe. Hartshoe is a global tennis company that happens to be based in the Mid-Atlantic. So they're based in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. So they're like, the world's leading provider of tennis court surfacing, um, tennis court consultation, uh, court uh, equipment and accessories. Uh, so they, they're good people. <laughs> again, they, again, feel free to reach out to them as well. They, uh, uh, they're very much uh, um, like to be in touch with all the, the especially the, the local um, providers out there. Um, yeah, if you have any questions on their consultation um, services, uh, you can look at their website. It's at, at hardshoe.com. And then there's a court a consultation service uh, section that you can look to more details for. All right. Okay, so bonus incentives for how to qualify. So there is an opt-in form, and this link is also listed in our the Mid Atlantic landing page. If, if you go there, you'll see the the um, the link for that. Um, all organization, all the organizations, tennis coaches must be Safe Play approved. Um, so this is something that right now the, the national grant is not requiring this, but we would require this as a um, as a baseline for the, to, in order to apply for this uh, extra incentives. Uh, it's pretty, I mean, I mean, it's all free. So it, it's really more about making sure that the, the coaches spend the time to complete the, um, the background check and education piece for safe play. And this is a, you know, it's required from the U.S. Olympics Committee for all of the U.S. sports uh, government bodies. So I think as you see over, as, as time goes by, you're going to see, you're going to see safe play more and more often. So yeah, if you haven't done it yet, I mean, just an extra resources uh, for you to make sure that your coaches are all um, all good. Okay. Uh, next one is incorporate data release language and player registration. So what this means is that uh, we want to just have access to be able to email again, email the uh, participants uh, afterwards to, for uh, from our marketing team just to uh, pass on word about you know just like things that they could do within the USTA ecosystem. Um, again, this is this is something that if they, did, they do get this email, they can be opt out of it later. Um, but yeah, this is something that would be additional um, baseline that, that would have to be uh, done in order to apply. And then the, the last part is a choice. You can complete at least one of the following three options. One is to run a team challenge. And uh, the team challenge, um, yeah, if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a program where it's more match uh, match play base. Um, it can be it can be geared toward uh, somewhat beginner players, but they can't be too beginner because they have to know some of the basics fundamentals in order to uh, uh, play in some you know play in matches. Uh, but what this program just focus on mostly is it might be a little bit of teaching, but it's really focusing on making sure the players are um, competing with one another and practice points, practice matches. Um, that's what that team challenge is. So if you want more information on that, feel free to let me know and I can follow up with that. The next one is, uh, sorry, the next option is to host a Tri Tennis Day free event between June 19th and August 31st. So what that is, is 
for most people, I think you would see that as a, a, a tennis festival. That probably that's another term for it. It's just a free event that you would, uh, I think most uh, groups, what they do is they put out uh, some of the tennis nets, the, you know, the kids nets out there and just run an event where people can come by and just uh, try out the sport. And then you, and on your end, you can pass out, um, you, know, you can use it as a marketing event. You can use it to uh, market your upcoming programs. Uh, we, you know, we like to see, uh, like, ideally, we would like to see a lot of these uh, Tri Tennis Day uh, events around or before uh, City Open. Um, so we kind of built some excitement for um, for the event. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a free tennis festival. And then the last one is uh, to use Serve Tennis as your organization's official registration platform for these for any of the Grow the Game grant uh, programs. The, for those that are not familiar, uh, Surf Tennis is a uh, is the new uh, UST registration platform, but it also can do some other things such as uh, like some business management uh, uh, stuff like court booking. You can generate reports. You can do some marketing through it, through emails, communications. Um, I know that right now, I think most organizations are familiar with it through the tournament space, um, but it does do other stuff such as host these um, like these type of more uh, traditional like intro level programs. For that, it does a really good job at it because it already has the template for these uh, program. It has a template uh, um, like website that you can fit out so that people can go to this website. They can see all your listed programs. Um, so for for this type of for these type of program, Surf Tennis actually does a pretty good job with it. Uh, but again, you don't have to do it. It's one of three choices. Now, that's all we ask is you can do one of these three, at least one of these three, and then you'll be eligible for these uh, this bonus incentive. All right, and this is my um, my last slide before I get into uh, the, some more Q and A's and any other questions that we have here. Um, I want to provide some tips and advice for everyone that's applying or have already applied for this uh, this grant. The first thing I'm gonna repeat again is to please apply early as possible. Uh, I can get that way. I can uh, get you on my radar. I can, you know, I mean, you know, I want, I want to make sure that you all get money. All right, so I, I can let you know um, if funding starts running out. And I won't if if you apply too late, I, it, it might be too late. So the earlier the better. I can help you out. Um, this you should include all eligible youth and adult participants in these estimates. But be honest and realistic. So I say this because uh, I think some, I think some groups have are used to just seeing the grants being only applied to youth programming. But uh, this goes for both youth and adults. So if you run programming for for those two groups, please include those numbers in your estimates. At the same time, again, just be just please uh, be honest and realistic with your numbers. So don't say like, oh, I'm anticipating you know three you know three thousand players. If you historically had maybe thirty players or so, uh, this helps us out with again our uh, assumption for how much um, funding that we have. So if we have a group that says that they have that much, then we have to keep that in mind. Okay, uh, we have to kind of mentally uh, you know block out that funding out. Okay, okay, okay. this is kind of mentally taken. Um, so just be honest because again you don't get you don't get the funding until the end of the program anyway. So just try to be as realistic and honest as possible with the, your estimates. Um, and you know it could it, it could change for sure. Like honestly we don't know like like you, you could have a little bit more a little bit less. Um, that's that's okay. Um, just just be realistic. <laughs> um, yeah, again, making sure that your program dates are within the May 1st and November 1st uh, timeframe. This was something that I saw that a lot of uh, um, a lot of the applicants that have already applied have had some issues with. So just, I'll just make sure that you, you keep it in that time frame. Um, again, we, we might there might be some um, like you know leeway, but just try to I, I, rule of thumb, just keep it within that time frame. One application per organization. So again, I've seen some organizations have applied for like like three or four times but they are at different locations but they're the same organization just do it under one application that will yeah it will save you some trouble <laughs> all right uh yes list the program registration website so there's a there's a, a section of the um, the grant application where you would put this down i have seen a couple organizations that have put nothing there or put na uh that would generally be like kind of like a red flag. And then we're like, okay, is this a real, like if we don't know you, like how can we tell that that's a real program that's happening? So please, if you can list your registration website, um, and if you can even go even further, list like the actual direct link, uh, that will make it look more obvious that this is a real program. 
Um, all right, funds should be used toward program expenses. So again, in this application, there's a section that asks you like how you're anticipating you're going to use the like, grant funding. Um, we're not going to do a uh, what's it called. Uh, we're not. We don't have to generate a report later to kind of like, show us what you use the money for. But please don't you know say like oh I'm going to use it for a lobster dinner for all of our coaches every night or something like that. Yeah, again, just make sure you're using it towards the uh, uh, your, your actual program expenses. Um, and then, yeah, lastly, contact me if you need anything. I think sometimes people forget that I am here as a resource, that USA Mid-Atlantic is, is, is a resource in general. Uh, feel free to reach out. I am, you know, yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I am only one person, but I, I have a lot to, I have a lot of love to give, right? So I, I want to help you all as much as possible. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or anything you're not sure about, just contact me. And then we can go from there. And if I don't know the answers, I will find the answer for you <laughs> in one way or the other. All right. And let me see. Last, there you go. And that's uh, that's the last slide. <laughs> so thank you for listening. And we're going to go into some questions that we have. Uh, let's see. All right. So one of the questions I have here is about will USTA be corresponding, connecting with the coaches? Will it be corresponding? I'm not, you know what? I'm not 100% sure on the national side because I do know that they get the validation form for them. Uh, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Actually, that's actually a good question. Um, so, like, the person that, that did email that to me, feel free to just send me a follow up email on that. I can follow up on that. Um, if, you have any, if you have any particular concerns on that, feel free to let me know. Um, I'm sure, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> that, that's a good question. I'm not 100% sure on that one. So I don't want to give an answer that that's not true. All right, then another question is about, let's see. Yeah, so short, shortages on balls. It's about whether the, short, the shortages on balls applies to the youth balls in addition to the uh, regulation yellow balls. So I know for sure the, uh, the yellow balls, for sure there's a shortage on that. So, for those that are out there that are planning for events going on down the road, try your best to get place orders for these balls as early as possible. I know that like, we talked to some suppliers; they have they have some saved uh, for emergency, but I would try to get those as early as possible because like, like they don't know they they also don't know how how long this will last. Um, as far as like the shortage for the red, orange, green dot balls, I think I haven't heard specifically the numbers for those. I would think so. I think I would think that there is some shortage for them because I know there's a a, a shortage of materials for the ball. So they do use a lot of similar materials. I would say that they probably have some shortage, but probably is not as bad as the the yellow balls. So just keep that in mind. Oh yeah. So net, uh, question about net generation is listing pro listing programs there still possible? Yes, you can still um, list your programs there so that you can at least take advantage of the. Uh, the marketing potential with that. Uh, if you want to take it a step further, you can then use the Surf Tennis platform to actually run the uh, um, you know run the registration through Surf Tennis, and then those would also be uh, listed on to Net Generation. All right, so, all right. Next question: Could this grant be used towards a Special Olympics program? Yes, it can. <laughs> so we already have at least one Special Olympics program that has applied. Um, yeah, I mean, if, as long as services a new, new or returning uh, players, then it would it would apply. Yeah. So as, as you can see, this grant, if for those that have been uh, you know, applying for grants in the past, this is a little more. Uh, it's a bit more flexible of a grant. I know that Nashua did that on purpose to make it uh, more as 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 accessible as possible to as big a variety of groups that are out there. But yes, Special Olympics does apply. All right, and then what is the information you share with us be available in writing? In writing, um, let's see. I mean, a lot of information that I'm saying is information that is listed on the website. Uh, so I think besides that, this recording will be uploaded onto the website soon. So I, I guess that would be also in a way in writing. Um, but yeah, I'm, now I'll be there, and now I think this will also be sent out. Uh, sent out through the newsletters. If you receive the uh, the notice for this um, uh, for this uh, webinar through the newsletter, it will be also sent out that way as well. And yeah, I think those were 
me double check here. All right, those are the questions that I saw. Are there any last minute questions or anything else that I can help answer while we are here? Um, I know that it's 12.35, so yeah, I can give you all back 25 minutes of your, your day. Yeah, I guess I will, I will do that. So again, if you have anything that you need, uh, feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, and then also check out those websites. They have a, a good variety of information, especially that FAQ section on the main website. Um, yeah, let me switch. Uh, oh, sorry, I saw one more question that came in about the main point of contact with Net Generation. If you're talking about Nationals Office, um, they, they, I mean, they do have some like uh, some national phone like phone lines. Like I know you can call the national line, and then there's an option you can pick the Net Generation. Um, but I guess again, if you have any specific questions on that, I can feel free to send me an email afterwards. I can try to follow up. Okay, so I, okay, I see it. So you can't log in. Yeah, so that one, if you can't log in, it probably more have to do with the customer care. So if you look up USTA customer care, then they have the ability to go into your profile and figure out, figure out what's going on. I, I can't do that, unfortunately, because I don't have that privilege to do that. <laughs> um, all right, and then, yeah, can we send the PowerPoint slides? Yep, I will send out a copy of these, uh, uh, of these slides as well. So I'll make a note. I'll, I'll send out to all the um, all the register all the um, registered uh, participants of this webinar. I can send it out. But again, if you don't receive it for some reason, you have my email address. You can email that to me. But it should come out. Eh, maybe I said if you don't get it within a week, then let me know. I, I, but I think it'll it'll be sent out sooner. But there's my email address if you if you need it there. And uh, yeah, all right. Oh, I, I sound like. I provide some value to some people. So thank you. I'm glad you all uh, got some some good stuff from this uh, webinar. I'm here. And yeah, again, let me know if you need help for anything. But hopefully, hopefully everyone on this webinar is applying. You please do. Okay, we won't give out this money. It's gonna look bad if we have leftover money. So make sure you apply. All right. Um, with that said, have a good this rest of your day. And yeah, thanks again. Bye everyone.